So as I mentioned in the last video, the next piece we're going to be working on is the fuchi, which serves kind of as a collar for the top part of the ska, or uh, handle. And it's pretty easy to construct. Uh, it's just basically made out of two pieces of quarter inch that we've been using, and then we just glue them together. Now as far as the two pieces go, you've essentially got a top piece and a bottom piece. The top piece is essentially a thick sepa, or a lot like your suba, um, that just inner portion there, we had to carve the hole for the tang, uh, and then have that outside. But then you've got the second piece on the bottom, which is essentially just the border piece, and that's going to overlap on your ska, so that your ska is actually going to go right into this recess that you've got. Um, and I'll explain why later. So basically, in, as far as making these two pieces, what you need is your bottom sepa, or the second one you've carved. And again, it's that template process where you want to use the piece that you just carved in order to use it as a template for your next piece. And you just need to do two outlines. Your first is just going to be just a standard outline around of it. Then your next piece is, like I said, a thick sepa, where you do the outside and then you do the inside. For this piece, all you're going to be doing is essentially cutting it out and carving this hole for the tang. Again, you want to keep in mind, like you did for the suba, that, that it's kind of it's a narrow gap for such a thick piece of wood. So you just want to be careful that you don't, you know, pry against the side and put dents along this outside edge, because that doesn't look as good. So you just want to take some care in carving that out. On this piece, uh, all you're really going to be doing is cutting out the outside, and then you need to carve out this recess or cut it out with a saw. There's two things about this that you need to know. The first is that uh, you need to know the thickness of your Edo, because that's what the dimension of this line right here is. From here to here is the thickness of your Edo, whatever you're using, whether you use actual Edo or some kind of substitute like I do. Um, I'm actually using bias tape, uh, which is fairly thick, um, but that's, you know, I know the thickness of that, so that's why I can kind of determine how thick this line is that goes all the way around. Um, and the reason for that is that once your ska you know, your ska is only going to be as big as this inside recess. It's not going to just fit in here and then come and be flush with this out here. So, if it's only going to be that big, you've got this overlap. Your Edo is actually going to take up this overlap so that when you're looking at it, you're actually not going to see a gap between here and your Edo. You're just going to see one nice line over the top and the same down here. And this just makes a nice flush look, which is really attractive. So that's why you need to know the thickness of your Edo and why I can't actually give you a dimension for this border is because I don't know what you're using for your Edo. So just kind of take your Edo, stretch it out a little bit, uh, and get a dimension and that's how thick this is going to be. The next thing you need to know when making this piece is that you can either carve out this piece on the inside, um, which is what I did and it just takes a little bit longer, or you can either carve a hole through all the way um, or you can just take a, a hand drill or a power drill and drill a hole, as I mentioned in another part, and then just, you know, take a coping saw blade, stick it through, and then just, you know, cut it out that way. If you do the cutout instead of carving, uh, you want to make sure that you don't cut this outside piece off yet, because you need something to hold on to for one, and two, you don't want it to be so fragile with the saw. When you're carving with it, you know, when you're carving the outside, it's not as uh, as much force that you're putting on it, so it's less chance of it breaking. So that way it's not as fragile if you just, you know, if you cut out this inside first and then you worry about the outside. So that's pretty much it. Once you've got this, which like I said is essentially a thick sepa, and then you've got this part cut out, then you can just glue them together. And just make sure that they match and line up with your bottom sepa. Like so. Now, as far as design work goes, this again, as you can see, has a fairly decent amount of surface area to it that you could apply some design to it. The only drawback is, is that this border is actually fairly thin, so you really can't do much in terms of that. Plus, you've also got two different thicknesses, so you can't really, you know, you can't do a design that takes up this whole space that you want to pierce all the way through, because you've got, you know, this won't actually show through, whereas this will. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. However, I have seen uh, Fuchis that have all sorts of nice little intricate but very uh, slim engravings 
that don't go very deep, but they're, you know, they're very subtle designs through there. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But they also look good just left blank in the color of your choice. Um, and again, if you really, really, you know, like a simple design, that'll work out great for you. So um, just keep in mind, but you don't really have to pay as much attention to this as you did with your Supa. Uh, but just, you know, keep an eye on it and be thinking about what you might want to do with it. Once you're all done with the carving and construction of it, uh, you just want to keep in mind the standard finish and fit where you just, if you're going to be painting it, just sand it down with 220. Um, if you're going to be, you know, leaving it bare wood, you want to do something a little bit uh, higher grip uh, just so it's nice and smooth. Uh, but the 220 will allow the paint to soak in uh, and do it that way. And then for your fits, this fit is not as important right now, but you want to make sure that your tang doesn't fit too snugly in this hole, just like with your Suva. Um, and that way, so that when you add paint later, um, you know, it won't be too tight. And as I didn't mention in the Suba, but, uh, you know, if you're not going to paint it, of course, you can just, however you want it to fit, you want to make sure it fits that way now. Unless you want to cover it with a polyurethane, in which case the same thing takes effect as with the paint. So that's pretty much it. I'll just slide it on so that we're done with it. And then we're going to move on to the ska, or the handle. Uh, it's another simple piece, and we'll see you then.